بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از یور کلاس آف ہسٹری آف انگلش لٹریچر سو دس از یور لیکچر نمبر ون ایم اے انگلش ہسٹری آف انگلش لٹریچر کلاس سو مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم یور ٹیچر آف دس سبجیکٹ سو دس از یور انٹروڈکٹری یو نو لیکچر ٹو دا ہسٹری آف انگلش لٹریچر اوکے So my dear students, as you know that you are students of uh, MA English, so this is your core course in, uh, you know, MA English, okay? This is your compulsory course in MA English. So I would like to welcome you to the virtual campus uh, Islamabad. Hope you'll be having a very nice experience with me uh, while learning history of English literature, okay? As I told you, this is your MA English class, semester one. Course title is History of English Literature. Course code ENG402. And uh, Institute is Comsat's Virtual Campus Islamabad. Okay? First of all, this is very much important to introduce the instructor because uh, in order to develop that kind of relationship between uh, student and, uh, you know, teacher. So that is very much important. This is, uh, my dear students, my introduction. I am Kiran Ruksana. My academic qualification you can see over here on this slide. I am a PhD scholar. I am doing my PhD uh, in Applied Linguistics uh, from National University of Modern Languages, Islamabad. Previously, I did my master's in uh, language and literature in 2006, uh, and that master's was from Fatma Jinnah Women University, Rawalpindi. After that, I did another master's that was in English language teaching in year 2008. My dear students, uh, I'm your instructor of uh, history of English literature. So, I am working uh, as a lecturer in Comsat's Institute of Information Technology, Chakshazad Campus, Islamabad. Along with that, I'm working as a visiting lecturer in Arid Agriculture University, Rawalpindi. Previously, I taught in FAST and UCES as well. So my dear student, that's all about me, okay? I told you about my qualification along with my experience, okay? So I am, uh, I'll be teaching you a history of English literature, okay? This is very much important. As you know, this is your first class. So uh, introduction to the course uh, is very much important. What this uh, history of uh, English literature basically is okay so this is a brief sketch of the course history of english literature this uh, the core objective of this course is to make students aware of the historical development of english literature whether it's social political cultural and economical background and its impact on literature through different eras so my dear students, basically we'll be talking about uh, history of English literature uh, in relation to different eras and we'll do, uh, you know, a comparative study side by side of uh, different, uh, you know, periods or eras in the history of English literature. So my dear students, uh, what you have to keep in mind over here from this slide is uh, this is, uh, you know, historical development along with uh, social, political, cultural and economical backgrounds, okay? So this is basically historical development. So my dear student, this is not just to tell you the chronological history of English literature like in this uh, year, you know, that happened or, you know, any kind of uh, event, uh, how far that is important as far as its age is concerned. Our focus would be on the development or, or the growth of English literature with the passage of time and the certain changes which took place uh, in different centuries. So my dear students, you, do, you don't need to get worried about uh, remembering, you know, different uh, dates, too many dates, uh, like because uh, English literature is comprised of too many centuries. Uh, so you don't need to get worried about it. Basically, the concept must be clear to you. My dear students, one more thing which is very much important as far as history of English literature is concerned, you'll have to take it like a story, okay? Usually people think that uh, history, uh, you know, uh, just talk about uh, dates, about years and the important events events over there basically we'll talk about those events as well but what is you know the impact of all those events in the development of English literature okay so 
this is basically the core or main or the primary objective of this course to uh, know about the historical development of English literature along with the other factors which are involved in the creation of literature in the development of literature okay another objective of this course is to inform students about how English literature has evolved historically and how socio-cultural and political inf uh, events have influenced its development through ages so my dear students again the development and you could see um, the growth of uh, English literature with the passage of time the events uh, which uh, contributed in the creation of English literature how the different happenings in the English society in different eras have influenced uh, you know English literature okay so this is another objective of this course although the scope of the course is quite expansive starting from the age of Chaucer the students shall focus on early 16th to late 19th century romantic movement so my dear students here you can see like we'll take a start from the age of Chaucer okay so and then we'll uh, gradually uh, move towards uh, you know 19th century literature 16th century uh, you know literature as well okay so basically this is uh, English literature has a very very expansive history okay and that is comprised of too many centuries okay histories of literature written by some British literary historians will be consulted to form some socio-cultural and political cross connections so my dear students here will uh, refer to different histories which are written by British literary historians when they talked about the uh, history of English literature okay the present course covers a, d a reference to the multiple factors from economic uh, theories to religious philosophical and metaphysical debate that overlap these literary works of diverse nature and time period under multiple contexts so my dear students again uh, the same thing is uh, being repeated over here what basically the point is uh, like uh, this course uh, will cover a reference to the multiple factors uh, so my dear students uh, like the factors the other factors or the elements which are involved in the creation of literature plus its development okay so we'll talk about everything in detail okay the reading of literature within its socio-cultural context will help the readers become aware of the fact that literary works are basically a referential product of the practice that go back to continuous interdisciplinary interaction so my dear students this uh, study of uh, history of literature is not only one discipline we'll talk about history of English literature and we'll uh, you know mix too many other disciplines uh, with it okay so my dear student that is why we'll have a look on it uh, from interdis interdisciplinary uh, perspective okay when we talk about psychology we'll talk about uh, you know sociology we'll talk about culture we'll talk about uh, politics uh, of uh, you know all the eras as well so that is why we'll have uh, an interdisciplinary approach towards studying literature in this class okay so my dear students you would be thinking like uh, what is basically the uh, the benefit of uh, teaching you English literature or the history of English literature so let me discuss some of the advantages of uh, teaching literature okay and uh, then we'll go for history of English literature as well okay literature can be very enjoyable to read so dear students like uh, literature uh, touches your senses okay so basically this is the depiction of the society depiction of nature that's uh, all about imagination so that is very much uh, enjoyable to read so this is uh, you can say the basic purpose of uh, teaching literature or of studying literature like uh, you use it for player purposes in order to read out a story or in order to uh, go for uh, understanding Understanding the styles of different authors okay so basically that's uh, for player purposes that is for the sake of enjoyment okay the other one is it provides examples of different styles of writing mirrors various authentic uses of the language so dear students uh, here you can say like as I told you in order to know about the different styles of writing okay and in order to go for using the authentic use of language what basically is the authentic use of language or authentic language the language which is uh, used by the native speakers of uh, 
any country okay so dear students like uh, as you know english is the native or the mother uh, tongue of uh, uh, the english people definitely so definitely when you uh, uh, read about uh, their literature when you study literature so definitely you will uh, have to go for authentic material you, you can utilize that material later on uh, in your classes as well so dear students here basically you uh, can have an exposure to the authentic language or the first hand language so this is basically the first hand experience of language okay so uh, here our focus is on different styles plus on authentic use of language that's the first hand uh, experience of language okay so anything which is in front of you like uh, for example a book uh, that is uh, uh, in front of you so my dear students you can read that book so definitely basically you are not uh, 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 listening to those people but that is recorded uh, in form of book so you can have a look on uh, uh, you can say the mother tongue okay like uh, people who are using english as a mother tongue okay it is a good basis for vocabulary expansion so dear students of uh, reading basically provides a basis uh, for you can say your uh, writing okay so dear students if you are uh, good in reading if you are a visual of reading the things so with the passage of time it would definitely enhance your vocabulary and then when it comes to writing so definitely you won't be uh, facing that problem of uh, you can say lack of vocabulary or when you think that you do not have a uh, uh, sufficient words to express your thoughts in a good way so literature is very much helpful as far as your vocabulary expansion is concerned okay it uh, fosters reading skills so definitely when you talk about uh, language skills so reading is a, a receptive skill so dear students uh, it would uh, definitely polish your reading skill as well definitely you are uh, uh, you can say in, involved in that reading so uh, you can say you'll be able to know about uh, reading techniques like skimming scanning making inferences or uh, you can say making your judgment on the text okay so you'll be able to you know adopt everything like the writing style of the uh, writer later on in your writings as well okay so definitely you can polish your reading plus writing skills by reading literature okay it can supply an excellent jump of point for discussion or writing so definitely you uh, when you are reading something so it becomes part of your experience that is stored in your uh, background memory so dear students uh, with the passage of time when you uh, you face any kind of problem or when you are discussing something with anybody so dear students uh, definitely you you'll be having more points okay so you have um, more vocabulary items uh, you have many ideas to discuss and uh, you have variety of uh, thoughts to write down as well okay so here dear students uh, you are not uh, an active uh, reader only like uh, you are just uh, reading anything any literary piece of work of for the sake of appearing in the exams only so my dear students here basically your focus is on uh, like uh, you can have a debate on that topic and uh, you ha can have a variety of points uh, relevant to any kind of uh, topic so here when you read literature so with the passage of time you realize uh, like uh, everything is part of your experience so you you become quite uh, mature with the passage of time okay it involves emotions as well as intellect which adds to motivation and may contribute to personal development so my dear students uh, for your personal development for your individual development definitely literature is very much important so it it definitely touches your emotion and in your intellect as well so dear students it is not only about the emotional words about the feelings only definitely your creativity is also involved here your thinking is involved so my dear students literature touches your heart as well as your uh, mind okay so it makes you creative it makes you full of emotions full of passions uh, enthusiastic okay so dear students uh, for the personal development lit reading literature is very much important so you might have seen people in your society as well like in your surroundings uh, like uh, those who study uh, anything like uh, for example any uh, kind of novels or even newspaper so they are quite mature because uh, they are quite aware of what is happening in the society so when you talk about english literature so it uh, has a rich variety 
it has a certain phases okay so with the passage of time when you start reading you can say different literary works which are which were present in any particular era so you would realize like you're familiar with the many styles of writing plus many themes plus many societies okay it is part of the target language culture and has a value as part of students general education so dear students uh, wherever English is common like we are studying English or you're promoting English so definitely uh, you'll have to promote the culture of that society as well so where is the depiction of that culture where is the record of that culture that is there in literature so when English for example is your target language so you definitely you'll have to promote literature that is written by the people of uh, you can say uh, that very language okay so it is basically a part of a student's uh, general education as well so my dear student it does not mean like you are promoting English literature because that's uh, you can say the uh, the literature written by the people of uh, mm, English language or you can say people who use English language as a mother tongue or who uh, possess English language it's not the case it's for general education as well for example in order to uh, make your students aware of anything like uh, for example when you talk about uh, world wars so where to find out the records of the world war definitely when you go for analyzing the movies uh, which are relevant to world war one two so dear students uh, definitely those are the edited version okay so when you talk about literature like the writers who were writing uh, during that era so definitely the true picture of world wars would be present there in their works okay so that is like a in order to make you aware in order to analyze the things and to uh, look at the things from this different perspectives and then to criticize that thing like these are some of the advantages of teaching english literature okay another advantage of english literature is it encourages empathetic critical and creative thinking it contributes to world knowledge so dear students uh, what basically empathy is when you put yourself on the position of the writer or on the position of any person who is experiencing any kind of thing okay so here like uh, uh, you uh, you can say you become familiar oh, you can say the co concept of emp empathy over here like uh, if somebody is facing any kind of trouble so if you are on that place so what would be your feelings at that time critical and creative thinking so dear students uh, as i told you like uh, you start uh, looking at the things from different dimensions uh, so it evokes uh, your critical thinking and your creative thinking as well so my dear students will be dealing with uh, uh, criticism as well as a genre in the history of english literature so my dear students here when you talk about critical and creative thinking so when you are critical then you become creative so according to many uh, critics like if, if you are not uh, critical or if you do not analyze the things if you do not give your own judgment about anything you cannot be creative then you just go for uh, you can say the surface meaning of anything so when you read literature definitely you compare the writings you compare different themes okay like if, uh, when you talk about different societies uh, in england for example as far as english literature is concerned so definitely it evokes uh, your critical thinking as well as your creative thinking as well so criticality or you can say your uh, um, criticism would lead you towards uh, creative thinking so you can never be creative if you are not critical so my dear students see here one more concept of uh, English literature is very much important that is your imagination so according to some uh, exports like uh, if you're not imaginative you can never be uh, creative so here imagination and then your judgment everything is very much important in creative thinking okay it contributes to world knowledge so dear students here when you talk about uh, your you know uh, broader knowledge of the world so definitely it would contribute in the world knowledge you get to know about different uh, people 
all over the world for example when you uh, read Scottish literature or Canadian literature so definitely that's a full-fledged history so dear students here you'll be able to uh, compare the things which are common in certain you can say cultures or in societies or on the other hand if you go for uh, you can say finding out the differences or opposites in different cultures so you'll be able to do that easily if you read literature okay it raises awareness of different human situations and conflicts so as we were talking about the trends and the traditions of different societies and cultures all over the world so here is one more concept that is of uh, you can say an awareness of uh, human uh, situations and conflicts so basically when you read literature so uh, gradually it becomes part of uh, your uh, long-term memory so gradually it becomes part of uh, your long-term memory okay so in this way you can get to know about different human situations like uh, when people they were suffering from uh, uh, you can say uh, war uh, or you can say if the, when they were suffering from any disease any particular disease which was common in any particular society so what was basically their situation at that time or conflicts as well like uh, what are different conflicting points or you can say different disputing points uh, in different societies okay so you can say like the common values of all societies those are very much uh, similar okay for example uh, honesty or you can say speaking uh, truth so here you can say on all the societies uh, these are very much common no society you can say all over the world uh, promotes uh, uh, telling lies or you can say dishonesty so here dear students uh, what are basically the conflicting points uh, you can get to know about those points uh, in literature okay it provides a basis for communicative activities involving the full four skills uh, so dear students here literature we're not separating literature and linguistics uh, here in this discussion here we'll have to go in a simultaneous way okay here we have to go in a parallel way okay so dear students uh, when you talk about uh, uh, the impact of literature on uh, uh, linguistics or on your language so that is uh, very much important okay how because uh, it enhances your vocabulary plus uh, you get to know about different writing styles so you can adopt those styles while writing anything you become uh, you can say familiar with the writing style styles okay dear students uh, how literature is helpful as far as your uh, reading skills are concerned like you become familiar with skimming scanning making inferences uh, okay or uh, to write down the central idea of any novel any poem so you become familiar with it okay so dear students uh, as far as your speaking skills are concerned so definitely you can say uh, you uh, when you uh, uh, talk about literature so usually people think that, that that is restricted to reading and writing skills only you read out something and then you apply it in in your writing it's not the case okay this is uh, you can say a full set of imagination that is set in your mind when you read out the dialogues which are present in any novel so definitely you just don't read it that is like inform that as you know that that's dialogue so definitely you imagine that somebody is talking to you and you are involved in the discussion so definitely there would be certain responses uh, from the uh, other party as well so it would enhance your listening and your speaking skills as well so here dear students uh, when we talk about the four skills uh, in languages so these four skills are reading writing listening and speaking so dear students let me tell you like two skills uh, reading and listening these are the receptive skills okay and two skills uh, speaking and writing these are the productive skills so if you are not good in uh, receiving the things in a good way if you're not a good receiver so definitely you cannot polish your productive skills okay so in order to uh, uh, you can say enjoy literatures definitely you read it so you become very good in writing okay so when you listen to something so with the passage of time for example if you want to uh, improve your pronunciation so definitely you cannot do it in your dreams only or while reading anything definitely you'll have to listen to the native speakers speakers of that very language in order to polish your pronunciation or to adopt any particular kind of accent okay it provides an opportunity for negotiation of meaning which is essential for FLA so here dear students what is FLA this is foreign language uh, uh, acquisition okay
what is this FLA this is foreign language acquisition okay so dear students like uh, you try to you know guess meanings uh, uh, of something okay in form of uh, like something is in in front of you uh, in form of literature so definitely you infer meanings okay so here dear students uh, you come up with your own interpretations uh, or your own judgment of meaning definitely when you are reading something like uh, mm, uh, for example any novel by um, you can say Henry Fielding for example so definitely every time you won't go to check uh, the meaning of in dictionary so it would enhance your habit of uh, inferring meanings from the text okay so that is uh, very much important so the, here uh, literature gives you an opportunity to negotiate meanings okay to infer meaning to guess the meaning okay what are basically the possible meanings over here so dear students uh, here you can have a variety of meanings you're not just restricted to lit uh, dictionary meaning only so you can go in any dimension so it all depends upon your perception background or you can say your experience okay the way you interpret the meaning so with the passage of time you become confident as well and uh, you can improve your vocabulary why literature is important due to its uh, cultural value okay let me tell you why culture is important in the formulation of uh, text so my dear students when we will be talking about different eras in the history of English literature so you would see a clear you can say depiction of culture of the society on literature okay what uh, basically uh, is the overall environment of the society what was the typical thinking of the people at that time okay so everything would be there stories have been of uh, central importance to the human race even since it began as far as uh, uh, we can tell cultures are built on stories histories myths and legends uh, fables religion and so on so dear students here you can see like uh, when you talk about stories so those stories are uh, about past okay so dear students uh, you get to know about different cultures in those stories okay what were basically the trends of any particular society that is very much present there in the stories okay if students are to understand and participate in the culture to which they belong they must first learn about the stories that culture has been built around and while books are not the only kinds of stories out there there are one of the most important so those stories are stored in books so my dear students you can read out the stories in order to be part of that very culture or society so stories are very much important that is your first ha hand experience about the culture as well okay so stories are uh, not necessarily written you can uh, uh, you can say listen to the stories uh, uh, from somebody so dear students uh, here you can say like uh, the stories which are stored in uh, in form of writing so those are more authentic as compared to the stories which are told by somebody okay expanding horizons okay so dear students here you can see like you can have a broader uh, perspective about any culture any society here okay everyone has a has a tendency to get so caught up in their own lives that they forget what's going on in the world around them as children and teens are particularly prone to this it's the goal of education to expose them to ideas from other cultures to teach them about the histories and peoples of other times and places so you can see during the modern era we are not uh, you can say inclined towards uh, uh, reading literature why because this is a very busy world and uh, you can say we don't have much time to listen to the stories to read out the stories as such so in order to make your children uh, aware of something so definitely uh, developing a reading uh, uh, habit is very much important okay so in this way when you uh, teach them literature or when you ask them to read out uh, literature so definitely it would uh, uh, expand their experiences and it would be very helpful for them when they experience the same thing in future okay 
Building vocabulary, as I told you when we were talking about the advantages of uh, teaching literature, so definitely this is a very important point, okay, building vocabulary. Having a large and wide-ranging vocabulary is essential for a number of reasons. It helps with both writing and reading abilities, of course, but it also allows for more complex discourse. Uh, the larger your vocabulary is, the more in-depth and thoughtful discussions you can have on important topics and issues, both in and outside of the classroom. When people speak, they tend to use a fairly limited vocabulary. So the best way to become exposed to new words is to read. So dear students, uh, when you read out literature, so definitely it expands uh, your vocabulary, okay? And then you can have more useful discussions, uh, debates on any particular kind of topic. So there won't be any kind of uh, repetition in your discussions as such. Uh, so what? how can you enhance your vocabulary? That is by reading literature, okay? So you can build up your vocabulary. You can have a, you can say, mm, uh, you'll be able to comprehend the things in more com complex discourses as well like uh, when there are certain situations uh, when you think uh, th the language which is being used that is very complex so if you are visual of uh, reading literature so definitely it would be very much helpful for you to understand those uh, discourses okay so dear students uh, this what do we mean by discourse here that is uh, basically language in use okay so dear students uh, by keeping in view all these things uh, you can see that uh, uh, how literature is important in your life okay improving writing skills as i told you like reading literature that would enhance your vocabulary so ultimately it would improve your writing skills as you know reading is a receptive skill so it provides a basis for writing skills so my dear students in order to improve your reading skills you have to be good in reading the things as well writing skills can be taught to some extent but the number one way to become a better writer is to read often when you read you are being immersed in language in the way it sounds and feels when put together in the right ways. Students who are encouraged to read have a more intimate knowledge of the ways in which language works and so have an advantage when it comes time for them to write. This effect can even be made transparent by encouraging students to try writing in a particular book or author style. So dear students, uh, you might have seen people around you like those who are good in writing, they are definitely good in reading as well. So reading provides you the basis for the writing skills. So in order to adopt any particular kind of style, definitely you'll have to read. In order to enhance your vocabulary, you have to read. So literature is very much important in order to have a first-hand knowledge of uh, the language plus to enhance your vocabulary and to improve your writing skills. Literature is not just teaching uh, for the sake of teaching, it uh, evokes your uh, critical thinking, okay? So basically when you teach literature, that is uh, teaching critical thinking, okay? Education is supposed to give students the tools they need to become a valuable part of society and one such tool is the ability to think critically. We want them to not just passively consume whatever is around them, but to analyze and criticize it as well. Literature serves this goal in a couple of ways. Many novels encourage critical thinking on their own due to the issues and themes they explore. So dear students, uh, literature leads you towards critical thinking. So uh, when you analyze something, when you are an active observer of the things while reading anything, definitely it evokes your critical thinking here. Okay, so literature is not just for the sake of uh, apply your purposes like you are reading it for uh, for enjoyment only it evokes your critical thinking it uh, you can say it develops your creativity as well okay so here dear students uh, like you can see while analyzing a novel or while reading a novel so you can challenge the things uh, so there is an element of resistance here while reading literature as well so dear students as you know literature is a valuable part of society so definitely uh, you can have uh, more experiences of life uh, while reading 
literature as i told you before like uh, when you read literature the, so that becomes part of your background memory of your you can say of your long term memory as well so definitely with the passage of time when you uh, face any kind of problem in your life so literature would be very much helpful for you at that time so my dear students uh, these are some of the benefits of teaching literature just to remove your confusion over here you might be thinking what is basically the purpose of teaching you history of english literature or literature so i told you some of the benefits of uh, teaching you history of english literature or english literature otherwise so my dear students uh, one of the most important benefits of uh, Uh, teaching you history of english literature is that you will be familiar with the different writing styles and different themes which were present uh, in different eras in the history of english literature plus the development of uh, english language and english literature with the passage of time in different centuries so we'll take a start from you know the ancient phase in the history of english literature and then you can see uh, till uh, today how far english language uh, uh, has evolved plus english literature so dear students basically the focus would be on uh, you can say the development of uh, english literature and the different trends which are common in any particular society and how those trends are different from any other era in the history of english literature so these are some of the points which you have to keep in mind while studying uh, english literature okay so dear students uh, literature is not just for uh, you can say the sake of uh, uh, studying any course okay so this uh, it would be very much helpful for you as far as your uh, daily life is concerned because uh, with the passage of time when you read out literature so it becomes part of your long term memory so when you experience something uh, in your future so definitely you take help from that um, background memory okay okay my dear students uh, so far i just wanted to uh, build your background knowledge of literature the questions which might be confusing for you okay my dear students uh, so far we have uh, talked about what are basically the objectives of uh, you know teaching this course to you people as i told you this is not just a chronological account of uh, uh, looking at the uh, different dates uh, you know uh, in history and uh, go back to the medieval ages or you to uh, you know the renaissance period or something so my my dear students you at this moment you will be confused uh, about this these terminologies which uh, i am using okay about medieval literature or about renaissance or elizabethan age or you can say the restoration period so because you might not be familiar with these uh, you know uh, ages so far so my dear students what uh, what we have discussed so far uh, that is about uh, you know objectives of this course what is basically the purpose behind teaching this course is to make you aware about english literature along with you know its, its historical development with the passage of time in different centuries plus uh, we'll focus on different ages okay or different periods in the history of english literature as well so we'll uh, look at you know just sociological factors uh, uh, of uh, that very society along with the cultural factors plus uh, uh, the religious uh, you know debate that was going on in any particular society okay and the the political circumstances of the country as well then we'll see like how those factors like uh, literature is at the center of the table and all these factors they are very much involved in creation of literature so while analyzing my dear students any literary work by keeping in view all the you know uh, factors which are involved in the creation of literature so the things would be very easy for you to understand so my dear students again you would be confused that why we are studying the history of english literature why not anything which is uh, you know uh, which is practical or which is uh, applicable in uh, today's society so my dear students basically you could see like when you you know you know the uh, historical uh, context you know what was basically happening in any particular century so definitely it would formulate your thinking about uh, your literature and it would really be helpful for you in analyzing any novel any poem any drama 
or any essay so everything would be uh, helpful for you so my dear students again I just want to develop your critical thinking over here okay like there must be an element of creativity over here when we talk about history of English literature okay so I'm just setting your background knowledge relevant to English literature so this course would really be helpful for you when you will do the analysis of uh, you know uh, different genres in l English literature okay overview of the lecture today in this class we will discuss what basically literature is okay and then history of English literature periods in the history of English literature and then the division of the, those periods my dear students We'll just take a start from the definition of literature, okay? And then we'll go particularly for what uh, history of English literature is. And, uh, you know, certain ages are there, certain, you can say, certain periods are there in the history of English literature because that is comprised of uh, too many centuries. So we have given, you know, those centuries and those eras, specific eras, certain names. So my dear students, here we'll just talk about uh, English literature uh, in general terms, okay? So my dear students, history is the biography. On the other hand, when we talk about literature, so that is the autobiography because nobody else writes, uh, you know, autobiography. That is the person himself who writes it. So in order to look at, uh, you know, uh, the culture or you can say the sociological issues of any society, so that is the true reflection of the society. On the other hand, you can say like uh, many events which are important in history. So somebody can just talk about those events only. So here, my dear students, when you talk about literature, for example, poetry, novel, drama of any specific era. So that is the autobiography because it speaks, uh, you know, itself about that very culture. Okay. So when you talk about different nations uh, of, uh, you know, uh, the world, so definitely, again, if you want to know about them, so uh, literature serves the purpose of, uh, you know, autobiography, okay? Like what basically is there in that very society? So, uh, for example, in order to know about English nation, so what are basically the characteristics of that nation so you could see uh, you know uh, it in autobiography plus in biography that is that would be present in history and literature both okay so what is literature that is expression of life in terms of truth and beauty so my dear students uh, what basically literature is uh, then we'll move uh, towards history of English literature what is basically that history literature basically is the expression of life uh, so in the very first line you could see this is the expression of life okay and in, th in terms of truth and beauty Literature is a true, true depiction of uh, life, uh, okay, so that is based on the facts and figures of the society along with the beautiful elements of the society. So my dear students here, this is a very optimistic approach towards, uh, you know, studying literature, okay. So basically my dear students, this is a written record of man's spirit, thoughts, inspiration and emotion. So my dear students here, we are talking about man again. Previously that was life, so here this is man, so this is a written written you can say record of man's spirit okay about his emotions aspirations and you can say uh, thoughts as well so in order to know about any nation so definitely if you read out uh, the literature relevant to that very nation so you could see like uh, the common thoughts or the common emotions of that very uh, nation in you know in that form of uh, literature okay so what are basically the qualities of literature so we talked about literature roughly like what basically literature is okay so that is a true depiction of life so literature and life uh, are part and parcel for each other if something which is uh, uh, not lively or you can say which is a dead thing so we cannot say that is literature so this is about society this is about culture this is about people this is about human natures and this is about human behavior this is about human relationships in the society so literature is what that is life so my dear students here you can see like these are three qualities of literature this has an artistic quality so this is a work of art so definitely it is written in a specific manner okay so my dear students uh, you'll be thinking that how uh, can we say that literature has the suggestive quality for example 
as you could see like uh, uh, it is based on the experiences of other people so literature definitely guides you it definitely suggests you what to do and what to do not to do for example when we talk about uh, Shakespearean tragedies so my dear students uh, like uh, when we talk about Greek uh, uh, tragedies or you know uh, Shakespearean tragedies so in that way you'll get to know about different characters like if they do something wrong so what would happen to them so definitely it would be very helpful for you to take any kind of decision in your future based on your experience so my dear students uh, uh, literature is interactive as well as this is not something which is passive and you keep on reading and you don't get anything so the reader's response is also very much important so basically that uh, with the passage of time when you sorry with the passage of time cut kar de. so my dear students when you read literature so that uh, becomes uh, you know part of your uh, long term memory and uh, you could say you start saving the things in your mind so next time in your future when you are in that kind of trouble or when you are in that kind of context so definitely you will be able to uh, you know use your background knowledge over there so this is uh, basically an exercise as far as your background knowledge is concerned okay so my dear students here you will be thinking like why this permanent quality is uh, very much essential for uh, making any piece of writing literature Let, my, I just want to clarify this concept with an example for example you know when you read uh, Shakespearean tragedies for example or when you uh, read uh, Canterbury Tales by Chaucer for example or you can say all the world is staged by Shakespeare so definitely it would be there in your mind for years okay okay this is one thing that is relevant to a reader for example if any reader is not interested in any writer so definitely that is not having any kind of permanent quality my dear students I'll relate this concept with another one that is an element of universality and we'll go for that one so we'll relate it with this one my dear students permanent quality means like with the past after centuries or after many years uh, like uh, that piece of literature would be very uh, popular okay popular in a sense because that is a depiction of the real life of the people so definitely it would be universal and uh, it would be there in that society or worldwide for uh, for a certain period of time that is why after many years we can say like that part uh, of you know uh, uh, writing is literature or not so my dear students by keeping in view these uh, three qualities of literature will move forward okay tests of literature how can you say that anything is literature or not okay two points are very much important one is universality and the other one is style my dear students by keeping in view universality the previous one permanent quality here literature is universal it is not restricted to any particular region it is not restricted to any specific period of uh, time so my dear students when you talk about literature even literature uh, that was written back in 18th century 16th century so that is still even popular today so my dear student this is an element which should be there when we call any piece of writing literature the other one is style as far as style is concerned so every uh, you know uh, literary genre, genre has uh, its own particular style although we cannot say that that style is very much uh, we cannot say that that style is very much restricted to that genre and we cannot uh, violate the rules of uh, any you know uh, literary genre so this is not necessary but uh, literature you can test literature on the basis of universality that it is a uh, universally accepted for example when you talk about english literature so we are living in east we are living in we're living in south asia so that is a product of europe my dear student but still it is a uh, you can say commonly uh, used literature over here in south asia as well okay so as far as style is concerned for example you uh, you can say like any writing is a piece of literature if that is written in an appropriate style for example when you talk about uh, you know Wordsworth style so you could see like uh, his style is uh, quite uh, uh, romantic or you know the themes which he has adopted in his poems so those are relevant to beauty to nature to human relations to human nature most of the time so basically you can test literature on the basis of universality and on style okay so my dear students uh, here uh, like uh, we, we use literature in order to teach our students uh, for example 
this is you can say like uh, what is basically the purpose behind teaching English uh, literature is that uh, like we are promoting English language plus uh, you know uh, English society or English people they are also trying to be more powerful in the whole world so by spreading up literature you can be powerful okay and uh, you can uh, promote your language plus uh, you can promote your writings your writers okay but apparently when we discuss what are basically the objectives of literature so these are two purposes one is to teach and the other one is to delight this is for player purposes okay what are basically the aims in studying literature uh, like uh, this is to know about human beings uh, to know about their souls to know about their actions okay in any particular era okay so basically my dear students through characterization you could see like we we talk about certain human beings we like any character we do not like any character we hate sometimes we hate characters as well so what is this that is the representation of reality in terms of literature in terms of written words okay the other thing is to know about their souls okay so my dear students is here I'm referring back to uh, the previous point that is what basically are the aims uh, in studying literature so this is uh, a true depiction of life this is about human beings this is about their attributes this is about their nature and uh, you know uh, about their relationships in the society so here this is uh, basically about human beings this is about uh, to know about their souls and uh, to know about their deeds and uh, actions for example when we talk about the uh, any hero of the play for example so you could say like uh, on the basis of uh, his actions uh, so we get to know about his soul okay but later on on the later stage if he has to feel face some kind of bad consequences just because of his actions so definitely he is responsible for action so this is uh, to uh, ultimately to control your own actions and to know about your soul as well so this is uh, you can say a realization of your own soul a realization of your own actions your own deeds okay why why important uh, why literature is very much important in any society because that is an autobiography of the society that is a reflection of uh, that very society its people and its culture okay so every civilization is founded upon ideals so there are many you know certain ideals in uh, you know in every society every human action springs from an ideal there are some ideals in, in a particular society and all the people of this society they imitate those ideals so basically the purpose of literature is to preserve those ideals okay and then to represent them in front of uh, the society okay literature preserves civilizations and human actions so where to find out the record of any civilization for example roman civilization they introduced a very good culture in the english society they were very civilized they you know built too many buildings too many roads and they promoted literature as well okay the the very concept of civilized world was brought uh, by you know uh, roman empires in english society so where is that record that is present in literature and that is about human actions as well for example when we talk about victorian society what kind of society they uh, had or when we talk about you know romantic society or anglo saxon society anglo norman society so my dear students uh, time and again i'm repeating some of the terminologies in front of you so you'll be familiar with the terms at least and then i'll define what do we mean by you know certain periods in the history of english literature so um, according to my point of view these four points are very much important as far as the importance of english literature or any other literature is concerned my dear students here you'll have to keep in mind we're not talking about english literature this is literature in every society so it preserves the civilization and it preserves ideals and it preserves human actions okay so you'll definitely uh, get to know about human actions uh, even after centuries okay so that is a kind of a record of everything of the society okay history of english literature now gradually we are moving towards history of english literature which is basically the main concern of uh, this course this is not a chronological account of books written in english language so my dear students here we are not focusing on english language or not year by year description of different events uh, you know in a book okay so we'll talk about uh, like the historical development of uh, english literature with the passage of time so basically this is the you know purpose of this course 
the literature of England is one of the highest achievement of a great nation. It should not, however, be read simply as a national expression. It is a body of significant statements about abiding human concerns. The language in which it is written has evolved over hundreds of years and is still changing. Several nations, including Canada, the United States, and Australia, are indebted to England for a literary heritage. Okay, so, my dear students, on this slide, you can see the importance of uh, English language along with English literature. Okay, so basically, English language is quite a flexible language, and uh, it uh, has evolved over, uh, you can say, hundred of years. So, my dear student, it is still, uh, you know, changing. That is why this is not at all a dead language. So, it has the flexibility and it has, uh, you know, uh, the capacity to digest uh, the words from different other languages as well. So, that is why with the passage of time. So that is why this is the world's language. So my dear students here you can see like uh, many many countries like uh, uh, Canada, the United States, uh, Australia, they are very much indebted to England for our literary heritage. So this is uh, quite an expansive course. Okay. So my dear students here you can say like uh, uh, English people they have quite an expansive you know uh, literary heritage. Okay. History of English literature again, uh, sorry, again, again, ko cut kar de. history of English literature, jo bola hai, usko bhi cut kar de. it is basically a record of the relationship between a writer and those who precede or succeed him or her. It is a record of the relationship between age and age. It is a record of the influence of individual writers on an age and vice versa. A record of both individual writers and their special contributions to literature. So, my dear students, here you can see. In the first point, this is basically a relationship between a writer and those who precede or succeed him or her, okay? And the other one, this is a relationship between age and age. So, it talks about the rise, the growth and the decline of schools and movements, okay? And the third point is uh, like a record of the influence of individual writers on an age or, or vice versa and the both individual writers and their special contribution to literature. So my dear students, basically history of English literature deals with all these concepts. This is not a year by year description of different events in the society or you know different centuries in the society what happened in that century and what is happening right now it's not like that this is a relationship of uh, you know a writer and those who succeed him okay and this is again a relationship of different ages so but basically it talks about the characteristic features of any particular age and its relationship with other ages as well okay so basically it talks about the rise the growth of any school or you can say uh, any moment okay so this is uh, like we will be talking about different ages in detail in uh, you know in the next lecture so my dear students will be able to know about those ages in detail that time okay so basically this is influence of uh, individual writers on any particular age and vice versa like how that age uh, you know ha ha had influenced that writer so basically it is uh, a kind of debate on writers contribution in that particular era and uh, you know the influence of that age on writer's personality on his or her writings as well okay so it is a record of both individual and uh, individual writers and their special contribution to literature so my dear student this is uh, like we'll talk about uh, individual writers will focus on their personalities and their contribution in any specific era in the history of english literature as well okay Aims of history of English literature. So basically, we use history of Eng English literature to give a clear account of whole transformation of literature from period to period. So, my dear students, when we talk about uh, history of English literature, so there will be too many changes which would happen with the passage of time when we compare different ages or different periods in the history of English literature. So, my dear students, it is uh, a study uh, to explain the success, those successive changes, as far as their matter, form, and spirit are concerned. So my dear students, basically our focus would be on all these things, okay? So this is an interdisciplinary approach where we, where we mix too many disciplines uh, together in one discipline only, okay? 
what basically are periods so I started my discussion with the period today what are like a different eras or different ages so basically uh, let me tell you what do we mean by period a period is a certain length of time during which a particular kind of taste prevails so this is the definition of a period in history a taste of an age differs from that of others so my dear students here will categorize uh, different periods so basically this is a certain length of time during uh, which a particular kind of taste prevails so all the people for example when they live in a particular society so definitely they face same kind of problems and they usually have the same taste as well okay. so my dear students a literature written in an age is marked by various common features like its subject matter thought tone and style so my dear students we get to know that the style the thought or you can say the subject matter of that era is very much you can say common among all the writers of that very you know age each age had its own particular lines of interest and its own particular way of thinking and uh, feeling about things so my dear student that is why we have divided uh, you know certain centuries certain periods uh, into ages okay so what basically is that uh, certain you can say length of time during which one uh, kind of taste prevails and you could see like uh, the same subject matter is common there the same tone would be there the same thought would be there okay so basically this is a kind of uh, classifying uh, certain periods okay factor deciding uh, deciding a period so my dear students here you might be confused like how can we decide any kind of period because there are too many periods in the history of english literature so i'll explain to you how what are basically the factors which are involved in deciding a period anything that brings fresh ideas and interest into the life of an age so definitely we would say that that would be another period so my dear students when we will be talking about uh, different ages in the history of english literature so dear students you will be able to know like about different tastes relevant to different eras okay anything that modifies the thought and feeling of a period so my dear students here you can say like uh, when we enter into uh, next period for example for example right now we are here in one period so we are going to enter in the next period so what would be that like f fresh feelings would be coming fresh ideas would be would be coming fresh style would be there so there would be uh, a modification of the previous thoughts previous feelings and previous styles a change in the attitude towards men and things so basically due to certain uh, sociological events for example the cultural activities which are going on in any particular society okay and how uh, do all those activities influence the mind of the people of the writers of the readers so definitely so my dear students here you can see like uh, will change our attitude to words men and uh, things uh, relevant to any particular era what are basically the labels of different periods the period in the history of english literature are usually labeled with the uh, epithets derived from history for example elizabethan uh, period at that time queen elizabeth was uh, ruling england or the victorian period for example queen victoria was ruling uh, england during that period so we have given their names to different periods okay so basically these are the labels of periods as well okay so my dear students now i'll introduce uh, p all the periods uh, of the history of english literature in front of you so this is just you know year wise description of the period so we'll talk about uh, all those periods in detail in the next lectures okay so here this is just uh, a briefing of all those pe periods that you you get to know about um, you know at least the names of those periods my dear students here you can see like the anglo saxon period which is the very first period in the history of english literature so you could see it was started in year 449 and it was ended in 1100 it is comprised of many centuries okay before uh, britain before the anglo saxons uh, so my dear students uh, here when we will be talking about the anglo saxon period so you could see like uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, the history of britain before anglo saxons okay so here my my dear students here let me briefly guide you like who were basically the inhabitants uh, before anglo saxon period in britain so celts were the inhabitants of that time so about whom very little is 
known okay so my dear students uh, this is uh, you know uh, i'll guide you about uh, britain before the anglo saxon period then the germanic invasions uh, then anglo saxon society what kind of society they had at that time and then uh, we'll gradually move towards anglo saxon literature so my dear students here our focus would be on the anglo saxon period okay and we'll spend a full fledged lecture on the anglo saxon period okay the second period in the history of english literature is medieval period my dear students you'll have to keep in mind that the taste or you can say the subject matter the style which was very common in the anglo saxon period here you won't be able to find it so that is why we have categorized different periods and we have given them certain names okay the medieval period it was started right after you know the anglo saxon period and the year is 1100 and it was ended in 1500 okay so again a very long period so you'll you'll get to know about the norman conquest during the, this period that was the reign of william the conqueror and the feudal system was also very much common during that period okay so we'll, then we'll talk about the medieval church as far as the religious factors of that very era are concerned and then we'll gradually move towards the medieval literature okay the third period in the history of english literature is the renaissance period and it was started in 1500 and was ended in 1600 so my dear students this is comprised of whole full fledged century and this is also known as elizabethan age because Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth was uh, ruling at that time. Okay, my dear students, there is one more name for this, uh, uh, you know, Renaissance period. That is uh, the age of Shakespeare because Shakespeare was the most prominent personality of that era. Okay. the other one is the puritan age so we'll talk about the puritan th thoughts uh, during that age so you can see this is comprised of uh, uh, 60 years okay the third one uh, sorry the fifth one 1 2 3 the fifth one is the restoration period and it was ended right after the puritan age in 1660 and was ended in 1700 so my dear students here you can say like this restoration period is uh, comprised of 40 years okay then comes the age of pope 1 2 3 then comes the age of pope that was started in 1700 and was ended in 1744 so my dear students here you'll you'll see like uh, we have given these names to certain period or certain ages uh, due to you know the influence of some eminent writers on that very age so here you can see that this is uh, the age of pope and this is also known as 17th century literature okay so it was started in 1700 and was ended in 1744 okay the age of johnson again a part of 18th century literature so uh, johnson was the most prominent figure uh, among the other, other writers so that is why we have given his name to this very age and that age was started in 1744 and was ended in 1784 okay then uh, the the eighth one is the romantic age so my dear students uh, here will uh, take a start uh, uh, you know of the romantic age from the year 1798 and that it would be ended in 1824 so my dear students then will after uh, you can say after the age of johnson my dear students the eighth one is the romantic age that was officially started in 1798 and it was ended in 1824 so my dear students here you can see like uh, the elements of romantic spirit would be too much present over there previously like uh, when we were talking about uh, the age of pope age of johnson elizabethan a so everything was uh, you know according to the rules and you know subject matter was quite limited and people they were not supposed to uh, cross the limitations of writing poetry so they had to uh, bind themselves uh, within certain rules and regulations so when we move towards uh, you know the a the romantic a so my dear students here you can see this is an age of freedom this is an age of uh, liberty people poets they were not restricted to uh, focus on form as such on style of writing as such rather they were more concerned with uh, theme or the subject matters so my dear student let me share some of the things of the romantic age with you people the romantic age focuses on you know beauty on nature on human beings and on their relationships so basically here you can say during the romantic age human be being is on the 
center of the discussion okay so instead of focusing on a form on the rules and regulations which you need to follow while writing poetry so you could see in the romantic age uh, my dear students uh, people they focused on subject matter and on themes uh, one more thing i would like to share with you people about the romantic age is that like uh, we'll have to give priorities to different genres in different eras as well my dear students here when we talk about the romantic age so you could see uh, you know uh, poetry was on the very top position over here okay so we'll talk about different romantic poets in detail okay the victorian age when queen victoria was ruling england so that age was started in 1832 and uh, was ended in 1900 so my dear students we will be talking about the victorian age in detail so you can see like we will divide victorian age into two parts one would be the uh, first half of the victorian age and the other one is the later half of the victorian age so you'll see the differences uh, you know as far as the subject matter uh, of both the parts uh, are concerned okay as far as the subject matters of both the parts are concerned okay modern literature okay after uh, the victorian age you could see modern literature and the tradition of writing modern literature was started in 1900 and was ended in 1961 so my dear students here will talk about different modern writers okay and what was basically their philosophy and how their philosophy was different from the victorian period or from the romantic period or from the elizabethan period or from you can say anglo saxon period so my dear students here you could see will enter into uh, a new philosophy in the history of english literature when we will be talking about modern literature okay then post modern literature my dear students uh, here like uh, after modern literature you could see like at that time uh, my dear students let me give you briefing of modern literature that was an age of scientific invention scientific advancements technology was on the very top so my dear students uh, later on like uh, they used to have uh, scientific formulas uh, everywhere even in literature so my dear students um, at that time they focused on science a lot and they were in search of ob objective reality or of objective truth which was later on rejected by the post modern literature and according to post modern literature we cannot ignore individual we cannot ignore subjective element of a literary piece of work okay so my dear students that was basically their doctrine then we uh, after drawing a comparison of modernism and post modernism my dear students so we'll talk about the present age okay which is till date okay so what are basically the trends which we are following till date okay so our focus would be on this one so my dear students in order to sum up uh, today's lecture i just want to explain uh, you know revise some of the points uh, uh, from today's lecture we took a start with what is basically literature and we talked about uh, history and literature and then what is uh, history of literature and then we move towards what is period my dear students here you can see like that was an introductory uh, you know uh, lecture uh, about history of english literature okay so my dear students when we will uh, you know uh, move towards uh, the detailed history of english literature then we will talk about different genres in the history of english literature as well okay for example about novel about uh, poetry drama prose essays and many other things okay my dear students here then you will be able to analyze uh, to uh, to do a comparative study of uh, different genres uh, along with uh, different ages so my dear student the point here to remember is that uh, literature is a reflection of life it is based on truth it is based on beauty so this is about human life uh, their actions okay about their intentions about their souls in order to know about any particular nation about any particular society so this is very much important to uh, read read its uh, literature because that is an autobiography of uh, you know that very society my dear students uh, here I, i just would don't want to tell you you know the year by year description of different events in the history of english literature definitely you should know the importance of this events the historical sociological you can say cultural religious factors which are involved in the formulation of text in the development of certain themes in the development of certain subject matters uh, you can say in order to uh, have a clear cut idea about uh, the style as well so you'll have to take care of all these things in future while talking about history of english literature this is uh, like um, you'll have to take uh, history of english literature like a story okay like there are certain events in the story like in form of plot so 
so my dear students this is you will have to arrange them logically in your mind okay the concept must be clear to you and you can say the important events of any particular era or the distinctive features of you can say any particular age or the writer's contribution you know to that very particular era so my dear students these are the things which you have to keep in mind while talking about history of english literature so my dear students basically the point here is that uh, when you talk about writers contribution so definitely uh, the most he or she would be having the most uh, you can say suitable style which is the true depiction of uh, that very era so my dear students here we are not going to focus on all you know the minor uh, you know literary figures of that time only we'll just talk about the most prominent or you can say the eminent figures of uh, any particular era in the uh, future lectures so my dear students hope um, you'll be able to digest the things in a good way and you'll learn a lot from history of english literature so my dear students this is my surety to you people that you will enjoy this course a lot we'll be talk when we'll be talking about different historical events so definitely uh, those are in form of uh, a kind of uh, you can say story okay so we'll talk about uh, you know different styles so my dear students uh, in future everything would be so helpful for you when you will be analyzing poetry or drama or novel because everything would be clear in your mind like um, the historical development of english literature what was basically the scenario at that time what was people's mentality at that time what kind of uh, problems people were facing uh, during any particular kind of era so from the point of view of analysis history of english literature is very much important subject so my dear students uh, by keeping in view the historical development of english literature will have a look on this subject uh, uh, from you know multi perspectives okay from a sociological perspective religious political economical and um, psychological perspectives as well so my dear students this is a kind of a subject where you'll study uh, all other things uh, uh, which are there in the society and which are very much important in the formulation of text okay so a text is that is in front of you in form of poem for example so that is not a text what are basically the factors which are involved in the formulation of text those are very much important in uh, you know literature so definitely you'll have to focus on all those aspects so i'll uh, share you know some poems with you as well okay of um, written by some eminent writers so uh, definitely you'll be able to get to know about uh, those writers in in a very good way okay so my dear student that is all about today so the today's lecture you know has been taken from these two sources so you can note down the uh, these two references okay so that is all about today in the next lecture we'll explore literature uh, more okay so that is uh, all about uh, the study of literature and then the importance of uh, you know history in studying literature because this is really a very very expansive uh, you know course uh, and uh, you know Uh, english literature doesn't have a history of one century only or a few years only so you can say like it got developed with the passage of time so we'll focus on each and everything okay so my dear student that is all about today so hope you enjoyed your first lecture with me have a nice time allah hafiz